Hi, I'm Brian. Welcome back to my shop. Today's video is the first in a series of what you can do with a pen attachment for your CNC router. Okay, so now you have a pen attachment. Hopefully you saw my video to build these. If you haven't, please go to my home channel page, check it out. I have show you how to build these two pen holders and also another couple designs as well. Um, I'll have a link in the description box to that video and also at the end of this video. So please go check that out. This is part one in a series of what you can do with these. And in today's video, we're basically gonna be concentrating on doing simple line drawings. All right, and we're gonna begin with the setup of the machine, a couple quick tips just to show you the ins and outs, and then we're gonna progress on to actually using them and what you can do with it. Before we begin, I'd like to say, if you're not a subscriber already, please go to my home channel, check that out, see my other projects. Uh, you might like them, and if you do, please hit that subscribe button, leave me a comment, and if you have any ideas on what else you can do with this when you're done watching this video, please leave me a comment as well, I'd love to hear it. Let's get on to the setup. Okay, let me show you how simple this is to set up. Hose clamp, tighten it down on your spindle. That's simple. If you have a rotter instead of a spindle, I can't help you there. You'll have to figure that one out yourself. In this case, it's this easy. You just wanna make sure your pen tip is lower than if uh, whatever on your spindle body. Like in this case, I don't have the collet nut on, but if I did, I would wanna keep this low enough to clear that as well. I'd, I'd recommend, you know, a half an inch minimum, but whatever, as long as it clears. Okay, so this is set up. This thing sets up basically the same way. The hose clamp just goes right around through this groove and clamps it to the spindle. All right, your next thing is going to be your drawing surface. Now I have a sheet of 16 gauge steel that I'm using. It's smooth and it's painted just so it doesn't rust, but you can use MDF or melamine. You just want a smooth surface. I, I wouldn't recommend using your spoil board because it might have ridges and grooves or T-slots and you, know, you can't uh, attach paper that way. You want something smooth throughout the whole range of where the pen's gonna go. I like to steal for a couple reasons. It's smooth and I can use these little magnets to hold my paper down as well. Works out real good. And I also use masking tape whenever uh, the mood strikes me. If I don't have the sheet steel on or sometimes I use a sheet of stainless steel instead of this one. <clears throat> and it's actually a little bit smoother than this, but I can't use the magnets. And then, so I'll use tape. Um, also you want to, uh, attach this to your spoil board and uh, to keep it from moving around. <clears throat> There's really no load on this, but <clears throat> just to be in the shape side, when the machine shakes and shudders sometimes when it makes rapid changes, you don't want to shift this out of place. So I usually put about four, five, six pieces of this tape just to help keep it uh, in place. All right, so that's basically it for setting up the paper. Now, let me show you the home of the machine. Okay, so if I home my machine, which you do every time you turn your machine on, you will see that the home of my spindle, there we go, is right there. This is the factory home of my machine. It's basically the end of my spoil board. Okay, you can see this is hanging off there. Well, no problem. Just slide your, whoops, shouldn't have taped that down yet. You just slide your, your sheet of MDF, or in my case, this steel, so that you are in line with the tip of your pen. That's your new home. And you can cover your entire working area of your machine when you do this. Like my machine is 24 by 48. That's what I can cut with the router in the spindle. Um, by sliding this forward and using a piece that's also, you know, 24 by 48, then I can cover that entire area with a pen. So 
or factory home. Here's the home for the pen. Now let's set the origin. I'm using a, uh, just a design that's already on my thing right here. Uh, and the center of the design is actually the center of your material and not in the corner. If you, if you have a corner origin, then set your pen point over to there for your origin. Anyway, the Z axis is real simple. Just bring it down until you have this depressed, the spring, I'd say about a sixteenth of an inch. That'll do you. And of course, there we go. My origin and my Z axis are set. So now let's just run a quick little project. I'll show you a couple seconds of it drawn. Okay, so now we're in real time here. You can see how the, my machine in particular shakes a little bit when it makes those quick changes. That's why you want to attach your, uh, your sheet, your drawing surface to your, to your machine. Uh, just a word, this is actually, this, this file was designed for a Sharpie marker and I was solid filling it. That's why you see those lines, that's the step over. As far as speed of travel, you can set your inches per minute feed rate for as, essentially as fast as the machine can go. Because uh, you're, you're not going to break the tip of the pen. Let me show you what you can do with this thing. This is a simple line drawing with blue ink pen using this attachment. This is the cheapest blue ink pen you can possibly get. The line quality is great. Um, and it's th this, this type of line drawing, I believe, is most useful for drawing something out to scale. And in this particular case, this was a preview to scale of a sign that I V carved. And it, sometimes, I don't know about you guys, but for me, telling the exact size of the text and the, visually seeing it to scale makes a big difference in, in, in how you want to size everything. Um, I guess I'm just not a professional at, at doing signs, but this really helps me out. Plus, you could, uh, you know, if you want to preview your cut, you can do this with a pen on, on a cheap piece of paper, or you could do it directly on, on the wood you're going to cut on, and you can see exactly that your file is working just the way you, you wanted it to. I think that's really, really useful. Here's a good example previewing a part by drawing. This is two inch thick solid cherry. My son needed to make four legs for a table he's building. We drew it, liked the way it looked, followed up by cutting it. To set this up in V-Carve, it's basically, it is the same, all the same vectors. All you do is select the items you want to draw and use a profile cut with the on selection for center, centered on the line, not in or not out, but centered on. And that will give you, uh, the, pen, the pen tip is like so small, it's negligible. I enter in uh, usually a 1 16th inch diameter end mill, just the way I run a preview. I could enter in smaller actually, uh, but 1 16th seems to work real good. That's all you need to do because that doesn't really matter. And it will follow the center line of all your vectors and it will draw you this. All right, here's a preview of the same sign. This was done with pencil. This point will actually last longer than you think. And I, uh, I hatched this. I used the quick engrave toolpath for this. And I set my step over. You see you can change how close these lines are by just using your step over, just like you would if you were V-carving something. So that's pretty cool. It gives you, uh, you know, a little more uh, solid look to something. And you can actually set your step over so close that it, it'll make this solid. You, that's something you play around with. This, I think, was about a, a 0 .50, 0 0.050 step over. All right, here's a, here's a line drawing of a Lamborghini. This was a CAD, AutoCAD block that I downloaded a while ago. I thought it was pretty cool, but I used 
this pen attachment with the ultra fine pilot point and it gives you some pretty nice resolution i mean you can see there the lines can be pretty close together without blurring out and i just did a small drawing you could of course draw whatever you want covering the entire range of your machine but that's that's pretty neat uh you can use that for you know artwork uh, you can actually draw two scale drawings out. Here we have just an example of how text comes out. Right up here, this is the actual size, half inch text. And I, I actually put lines in, in the, in the VCAR file that were spaced a half inch because you know some fonts aren't exactly what they tell you. But this particular font, which is a single, this is a single line font. These are single line fonts. This is a true type font. And this, just to give you an idea, they actually are what they're supposed to be. So this was done with a good old Sharpie fine point. Just a regular old Sharpie fine point. So you can see it at half inch text size, the text is pretty clear. Three eighths, it's, it's, it's also good, but some of the details can start to get a little close together. It all depends on what you want to do. You can play with it. Here, this text was done with this fine point on this attachment. And that's quarter inch text. It come out awesome. I mean, it is like, I don't know if this is New Times Roman or I can't remember what it was. But it's quarter inch, came out great. I kept stepping it down. I actually changed to uh, a single line font because I know we'd start to, we could start to blur some of the details together with a true type font. But 3 16 great. 1 8 of an inch, great. I don't know if this is close enough for you, but right there, 3 30 seconds, it looks good. I probably could have took that down to 1 16 but I didn't. So the text comes out good, guys. Of course, it depends on what fonts you want to use and what, what you're putting in there, pen, pencil, marker, whatever. All right, here, here's something you can do to have a little fun with your machine. This is a maze, just downloaded free off the internet. Um, brought it in, and I used some, these are the extra fine point Sharpies. I just was playing around. I used green and obviously a different color for the center thing. And this text here, I used a, this is a pilot roller tip. It's called Precise. I, this is the kind of pen that I, I, I actually write with all the time. So I, I gave that a shot. Worked good. So there, you can, you can do some fun stuff too. All right, you can get artsy as well. <laughs> Here's a, this is a uh, drawing that I pulled in off the internet. It was pretty much like a clip art type thing. And I ran it through VCarve and I, it was a bitmap raster image, so I traced it, and I, it was a series of all these really small lines, and I used a pencil for this as well. And you may notice here, it's a, this is where it started coming up this way, so uh, the tip was real sharp at that point. It quickly dulls down and kind of stays more consistent, but it was a little darker here at the beginning. Come out pretty cool, and this is on a, this is on a thicker weight paper, I thought I would just try that out. That come out pretty cool. Uh, here's some more artsy crap. This also was a, a clip art image I pulled in. I just used the, the blue ink pen for this. This is one of the first things I played around with. If you, you can notice here that this is all double lines and that's because that was a, an image that was pulled in. Again, a raster image. It was either a PNG or, or a bitmap, and when I, I bitmap traced it in VCarve, it, it would take whatever line that was and actually, you know, turn it into two lines. I could have set, I, I, it would have took forever, but I could have set this machine, you know, and I could have like quick engraved this so that this actually filled in, and these were solid, but I was playing around. And he, here's another one, just another idea. This was a Japanese dragon that just had a lot of detail. I pulled it in. Come out pretty good. There's a couple of details I, I didn't spend the time, but you could have cleaned these up and connected these lines before you drew it. Okay, so that's, a, that's an idea of some of the line drawings on paper. 
All right, you can also draw obviously on wood. This was using the extra fine point Sharpie marker. And let me give you an idea that that text is about an inch and a half square. So like if you wanted to put your trademark or your logo on your wood projects, you know, no sweat. Put the Sharpie marker in there, go to town. Here's something else that's pretty interesting. I, I, I have done it before and, and, and I will continue to do it, is you can lay out directly on metal. This is uh, just some galvanized sheet steel and I use the Sharpie extra fine point. And this is an odd shape pattern that if you have to lay this out by hand, because obviously I can't CNC cut this out, it's, it's steel and I don't have a plasma cutter, so I gotta cut it the old fashioned way. But you got an odd shaped design like this, if you have to lay this out on the sheet steel by hand working off a drawing, that takes a lot of time, especially if you already have the drawing in CAD. Just throw it up there, draw it out. You know, you can mark the center line of holes, and if you have any bends or additional information you, you need to put on there, go ahead and draw it right on there. All right. We're not just limited to, uh, to, to wood, paper, and metal, guys. You can draw on leather, too. Look at that, huh? I drew on the rough side for you. I don't want to waste this piece of leather as an example, but um, obviously if it draws on this side, it's going to draw on that side. Um, why would you want to do this? I don't know. Maybe you make belts or saddles or leather purses and you know instead of using a template you can draw right on the leather and cut it out here's another cool thing I was just playing around you can put your logo on corrugated cardboard boxes you know because the floating action of the pen the spring springiness will take up many of those irregularities this I one of the first things I did too I just used permanent Sharpie marker. It's a real thin line. I could have, uh, this, this design won't work with the thick tip. You know, there's too much detail. So I did, I just used the extra fine. If you have a simpler logo, just initials or whatever, and you want it to be bolder, you could absolutely use this. It would stand out a lot more, but just goofing around. Okay. That's about all I got for you today here, guys. In the next video, we will be showing you some really cool stuff, mainly using Sharpie markers and doing some different stuff other than line drawings or drawing on wood. I will see you on the next video.